up everybody happy tuesday um just making sure we're on all the right places mm -hmm. yeah we're good we're good okay Let's jump welcome in. welcome and uh, you may or may not notice if this is your first time here you wouldn't be able to tell at all the difference but uh for those of you that have been coming back for quite some time Guy's actually in a new office, in a new house, <laughs> mm -hmm. so it's very exciting. 2022, off to a bang. Um, a lot of people. Oh, hi. Taga, good to see you. Taga's been around us for quite some time. Taga's probably seen you through a few different offices already. <laughs> Got to keep people on your toes. Yeah. Um, well... We're going to talk today about uh, stress, anxiety. Oh, you remembered. Very nice. Mm -hmm. uh, for those of you guys that are joining on this platform that we're on, Guy just dropped a link, the chat.restream.io, blah, 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 blah. If you're on our Facebook group, oh, um, on. the Touch only it. way that we'll be able to actually see your name pop up when you comment in, in the restream where we're at is if you actually click on that. It basically syncs your uh, name so we can actually see and it won't say, uh, oh, there it is, yeah. the second link. Yeah. So it won't just say uh, Facebook user and we can actually communicate with you and if you ask questions and things like that. So definitely click that link and uh, set that up. Then um, we're going to talk about stress and anxiety. And uh, <clears throat> I think it's something that, well, I'm going to say it differently. I know it's something that we all live with. Um, and I also know that it's something that we uh, all want to improve in. You know, like everyone's New Year's resolution has something to do with either I want to get healthier. Uh, and part of that is I would really like to be less stressed in 2022. Uh, the world has given us many, many reasons, I guess, to be stressed. And um, yeah, so we're going to talk about that today. Before we do that, um, I just want to share that if this is your first time here with us, there's a few ways that you can kind of uh, participate in this community. You could just be kind of like, a, what are they called? Wallflowers, right? And you could yeah. just kind of sit in the background and let this stuff wash over you. <clears throat> uh, did I just freeze? My video. You did. You did, but you, I can hear you. Hmm. Let it catch Strange. up on its own. Yeah, it looks like your your signal is way down. Give it a second. Uh, uh, I can hear you. That. You can still hear me. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll try to figure out this whole camera thing in a second. Uh, the that's one way that you can participate. The other way that you can participate is, I, my guess is that people join this group. Uh, I'm going to say for two reasons, but primarily because like you want something. There's a result that you're wanting in your life that you've been searching for in books and videos and coaches and seminars. Like there's something that you came here to get. And if that's true for you, then I would say share it in the group. Like actually go share in the group. Like I joined this group because... This is what I'm working on right now in our lives, because what you're going to quickly see is this is a very, very special community of people. People that you're going to find here have done a tremendous amount of work on themselves. They're not new to personal development. Uh, we have people in here who are practiced, you know, decades long meditators. Uh, we have coaches. We have I mean, there's all sorts of people here. Um, and we're all like, no one in here is enlightened. No one's here has figured out the secret key to life. Like we're all in this together. 
And I think one of the biggest misconceptions or the biggest pitfalls I see uh, with most people who are really, really delve deep in personal development is that we're all on our own little island doing our own thing trying to make ourselves like be the best version of ourselves that we can be so that one day we can come out and present ourselves to the world. And like, look at me, look at all the work that I did. Mm -hmm. But the truth of the matter is that this work works when you're in community. It's the reason that most all of our programs, I should say all of our programs have a uh, group component to them. Even if you have a one-on-one -on -one coach, like there's still a group component because it's in group that we can have this healing. So if you're talk here about, and you want to talk about the self to self, self to other. Yeah, yeah I will. What that means, yeah. If you want to like really step up and actually make this group powerful for yourself, it's like just share in the group when you join. Hey, this is what I came here to join. Uh, this is what I came here to, to work on. Right. And just you'll find other people who will be like, Holy crap, I'm working on the same thing. Like, oh, da, 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 da. like, do you know about this? Do you know about that? Um, and it's really, really beautiful. Okay. Um, and then the other way that I think like you can even take a step farther and, and participate is if you did come here to get something, it's one thing to like let information wash over you. It's another thing to experience something. Hmm. I don't know that Guy and I are going to share anything verbally that you're going to sit back and go, wow, how have I never heard that? And the truth is, you've probably heard most everything because I know the kind of level of work that you've probably already done on yourself. But if you've found your way into this group... It's probably because all that information has still not solidified and given you access to actually living the life that you want to live. Having information is wonderful, but without the experience, it's honestly meaningless. It's a good ego trip at best. It's a good thing that you can share with people to make yourself sound smart at a dinner table. But honestly, who gives a shit? If there's still struggles in your relationships, if there's still struggles around your health, if there's still struggles around your finances, if you're still struggle, if wow, it's just still struggling. This is a lot of to try to say out loud. It's very tough to talk. If you're wow, that's like guys, if you're still struggling with stress <laughs> and anxiety, that's just a lot of S's in there. Um, <laughs> then I want to let you know, like. There's an experience that you can have here. You know, like we're, we're doing our two-day live event uh, this Saturday, Sunday. Like if you want to take a leap and actually experience stress and anxiety, literally like melt from your system, as much as I'd love to give it to you here in like 30 minutes and go, here you go. I can't, right? Like there's a process that we take people through, but like, Trust me, if you want to experience stress and anxiety and overwhelm, just literally melt from your system. We do practices and we do, uh, not experiences, um, exercises that will <laughs> actually help you do that quickly. And then you'll be able to take those on and just continue on and on and on and on and on. So, um, Plug there if if guy wants to throw up the link. We we still have tickets through Wednesday. By Wednesday, we will shut it down, and you will not be able to get into this program anymore. So uh, definitely, so you basically have twenty four hours thereabouts. Um, and part of it is because as soon as you log in, you actually get a pre course training. So we give you a few days to go through that before you show up on Saturday and Sunday. I was talking about um, the three different modalities for healing, and this is something that uh, we've really, really come to grips with uh, because Guy and I were just like you. You know, we spent, I mean, this is our 20th year since we started our personal development journey individually. 
by the way, I would like to figure out at some point, roughly, how many hours of coaching we've actually done. Because I think the number would stagger us, right? Like, we've been coaching, basically, if you think about it, every week since probably 2005, six, Something like that, yeah. Right? Like, I was actually yeah, just, true. someone said to me the other day, they're like, I have 35,000 hours of coaching. I was like, I think I easily have that, <laughs> if not more. <laughs> um, so it was just a crazy number when you think about it. But in any event, um, a lot of the practices when we first started for like the first 15 years had a lot to do with two different modalities, either self to self. like, oh, like hold, hold on a second. Just so people are kind of a little bit more interactive. So how many of you guys in the chat, right? Like obviously now you have something in your life that's causing stress. Why don't you go ahead and just share what's the area of your life right now that you are really dealing with is highly stressful for you or, um, you know, something you've been working on for a long time, or if it resolved, would make a big difference in the quality of your life while well, Elon's chugging that down. It's, it's a thick fake. It's You're, thick in a good fake. One You're in a good one today. <laughs> thick fakes are tough to set. Oh my God. <laughs> should I, maybe I should just take over. I don't think you, you didn't show up today. Uh, All right. <laughs> all right come on, please. Fun. Go, come on come on um, i'm just having fun all right oh my god <laughs> so three modalities hell me <laughs> the first one is self to self this is like when we read books when we watch videos and someone's like okay do this meditation or do this gratitude or do right we're like doing it with ourselves the second one is kind of level two, right? So level two would be someone actually hires a coach. So now you're sitting and you're having one-on-one -on -one practices. So now you have that additional reflection. And how many of you just out of curiosity, uh, how many of you guys have hired a one-on-one -on -one coach before or have worked with a one-on-one -on -one person before? Just so we kind of get a sense of who's here. And for those that did, you know, like when you first did that and then that person started to give you reflection, you were like, holy shit, I, I never realized that, right? And it's a beautiful process when someone can actually like sit and give you that reflection because it really opens you up to realize I can't see myself. I can see aspects of myself, but I can't fully see myself. Right. And as we build more and more uh, connection and safety with that person, we can almost allow more and more and more stuff to come through. Okay. So that's level two. And this is where kind of most people stop. I know for Guy and I, this was kind of where we stopped. And we just kept looking for a different one on one person to give us different reflection, so on and so forth. It wasn't until a few years back where we really started to become aware of something called the group. And in the group field, something very interesting happens. The parts of you that weren't necessarily comfortable even to be seen by another in a group, you can almost like kind of sit in the background, be in the field and have these parts arise naturally without you having to be kind of like the main focal point of something. And because traumas got created either in a one-on-one -on -one interaction or a one-to-many interaction, it would lead us to believe that we can handle certain things and ruptures and traumas in a one-on-one -on -one situation, but there are certain traumas that happen in one-to-group or one-to-many that we can't handle in a one-to-one. -one. We need that energetic makeup in order to be able to heal that part. And so all of our programs without question, all have a group component in it because we have found that people tend to have bigger breakthroughs in a group setting than they would in one on one settings at times. Um, and it's just been super, super beautiful. So even with what we're going to talk about here today with like stress and anxiety, 
um, there's something very, very powerful. And maybe you've even experienced it. I know some people who go to church or synagogue or mosques or whatever, they, they tend to like sit in these places and there's just a group energy field that allows your system to regulate to the group. And that down regulation actually brings health, vitality, uh, and healing to your system. So uh, very, very powerful to be in that group. Cool. Uh, all right, guys. So check this out. Let's let's kind of get into the meat and biscuits here. And I can use myself as a as a demo today for you guys. But you know, like how many of you guys do personal development work? And and I see people falling into this trap all the time. Certainly uh, a trap that I used to fall into a lot. I have even very very knowledgeable, wise, intelligent friends that regularly fall into this trap. And the trap is you think you are like a cons like some concept away, some level of understanding away from being able to shut off your stress. You're like, well, if I just understand the core of my stress, I understand how it works, I understand where the trigger is, I understand who's doing it, you know, like like all these different things that somehow you'll you'll relieve yourself. Okay, like so how many of us are are at some level you know, doing that to ourselves. You can say yes in the chat box or say I in the chat box. Okay. And this is a, a kind of a pattern that I want to investigate with you guys and, and, and break in a way, because a lot of the conditioning that we got as children is that there are aspects of life that we want to experience. And then there's aspects to life that we want to avoid, worry about, protect ourselves from. And, you know, that said, right, like I understand having a shelter, abundance of wealth, food on the table, right? These are like practical survival things. I'm not saying, hey, don't don't concern yourself with those. What I am saying is that like, ultimately we think we're gonna put ourselves in a situation in life where stress stops. Like if I just make enough money, if I just get the right career, if I just find the right man or the right woman, if I just get my kids to be more obedient, you know, like X, Y, and Z, you fill in the blanks. And you know, most of us have played that game, if not all of us. And I think most of us have probably figured out at this point in time that that is a fetal game, doesn't really work and certainly doesn't cut the stress out of life, okay? And so here's the first reality is we wanna befriend our stress, okay? We, we honestly wanna befriend every aspect of humanity, every emotion, every single thing you were ever taught that is quote unquote negative about a person. We want to befriend those things. Okay. And I'll talk a little bit more about exactly what I mean about that. So it's not this uh, arbitrary thing, but just for a moment, I want you to close your eyes. I'm going to invite you to close your eyes and just take a deep breath with me. And do it one more time. And this time when you breathe out, breathe out like you're breathing out from a straw. Deep breath in and then breathing out nice and long like you're breathing out from a straw. One more time. So I imagine that the greatest discovery that humanity will make over this next many centuries is that the world without, outside of ourselves, is really a reflection of the world within. And because of the conditioning on our planet so much of our focus is on what's happening outside of ourselves when the answer as we've heard in all the cliches lies within like the kingdom of heaven is within you right so what i'm going to ask you to do again is to just close your eyes here for a minute you can bring anything that's stressful to mind and the beautiful part about bringing something to mind is really like you have an intention to bring it forth so you don't have to go into the stress you don't have to make things stressful right now but just have like an intention, bring that intention to this area of life, your attention and intention. And what you're going to find is the body immediately correlates with a response. Now, some of you guys will get this really quick. Some of you guys may not feel anything at all. Okay. Some people are really tuned into their body or they're a little bit tuned into their body, but what's happening is somewhere su subtle. Okay. So I'll tell you for me, like I've spent the last three days sleeping very little moving a lot of heavy stuff um, for anybody who's moved with a family, you know, you want to get your kids set up. You want your wife to be comfortable. Like, and I'm a, I'm an organized person. Like I can't live in a house. Um, 
I don't want to live in a house that has boxes and bags and things everywhere like that. And so I, I'm telling you true, like I came from three and a half days of that right onto this call. And I'm, I'm actually in a stress response right now. And, and where I feel it directly is down here. It's, it's almost down. It's most heavy here, where I have the solar plexus, the back part of my stomach. I feel a little tension in the back of my heart because there's this like this anxiety of everything needing to get done and a little bit of uh, the base of my throat here feeling restricted, like it's not free and open. So this this area really is feeling pushed back like this. So just for a moment, take take a moment for yourself and just tune into your body. And again, that just means slipping your awareness down away from the mind and towards your body and see where you feel some level of restriction in the body, because that's really what we want to work with. Okay. And it doesn't matter. I don't know how, how, if you guys have tried this. I'm sure you have. You know, you stay up all night. It's like negotiating with a, with a terrorist. It's like there's this part of you that's stressed out and worry. And it's like, I don't care what you tell it, how you try to calm it down. You tell it, we've been in this situation before. Don't worry. Everything's going to be fine. I'll figure it out. No, no, they're going to help me. Like you, you know, you negotiate with yourself and there's no feeling of relief whatsoever. How many of you guys can relate to that? So once you've located this area, you want to start realizing that this is a, a, a physiological, a biological and a subtle energy response that your body has to everything, not just stress, not just anxiety, not just overwhelm. But joy, complacency, you know, enthusiasm, like everything has a response. You know, how does it feel when you're enthusiastic? Feel, you know, it's, uh, it's like wide open system, very excited. Let's do this, this feeling of like moving forward. But stress and anxiety is this like push back stress in the body and almost like you don't want to move towards that thing. You, you feel like you want to move it away from that. Okay, so the first thing we want to realize about stress and really any of our emotions is that, yes, there are forces out here but what really matters is your relationship to those forces elon and i could look at the same situation you know that might be really stressful for me like wow that's causing me so much anxiety and elon's like beyond excited right like you yep. put elon and i at the peak of a mountain to, to ski and we're both really good skiers but I'll, elon is you know head and shoulders above me and he might look down that trail and be like this is amazing i can't wait to ski that and my and my legs might be shaking at the same time at the thought that we're about to go do that thing right same mountain same external force com two completely different relationships why based on the conditioning based on all sorts of experiences that elon and i had that um provoke fear or safety in our system and our biology is going to respond cohesively right to that experience so it is Foolish to think that by changing a thought that your body is going to respond to a stimulus that it knows, right? It's been in that situation before. It has felt threat. It has felt trauma in those moments. And your body is very intelligent and it's going to respond accurately. So what we want to start doing is not, not negotiate with our body. Not please stop doing this. Not, hey, why is this happening again, right? And this is how a lot of people get into like super anxious responses because they're not working on the anxiety. They're literally like like a, trying to figure out how to make it stop, which honestly just adds to the flame. It, it makes it more complex. It makes it the anxiety even more dynamic because next time it's like there's this part of you that's working really hard and wants to get off that loop. It wants to stop. It's trying to make it better. It's not trying to fight against you. And then this is what you want to notice, that this part that's stressed out is not your opponent, is not sitting in opposition of you. You guys have the same end goal, but how it's trying to get there it's trying to get there with, with the wrong information. It's the same information it always had. Okay, like this part doesn't look out into the world and think, oh, everything's changed. I can feel safe now, right? It has, it has like an intuitive response. And so here's, what, here's like kind of the rub of the deal, right? When we watch, right? When we watch what's happening in our body, and if, bro, if there's anything you want to add in. Um, I just, I just want to, I'll let you finish, but I want to yeah. talk about, Natalie made a comment about meditation and stress. Yeah. Yeah, so here's the thing. Your body and your conditioned mind are as, as if one, okay? So we kind of like to think of thoughts as appearing from here, and, and that's fine. But what's really occurring 
is that humanity has been conditioned to keep their awareness here behind the eyes, tucked in the brain, okay? But just for a moment, and I want you guys to check this out, especially if you're new to the community. If you put your hand up like this, and I ask you to put your awareness on your hand, I want you to notice that you can do that quite easily. So we call this non-local awareness. This would be local awareness. Now we're going to non-local awareness. And I want you to notice what you notice about your hand as we do this. And what people usually say that they start noticing about their hand is some kind of increased level of sensation, more heat, tingles, pulsing, cool, sometimes numbness too. And numbness is, is not a lack of sensation. That is the sensation. Okay. And so I want you to see how quickly that you can, at some level, unlocalize from the awareness here and go and bring your awareness to your hand and that you don't need uh, a manual to figure out how to do that. It's intuitive. Okay. The other, so just try this again. Bring your awareness towards your foot, your left foot. And again, what we're looking for is, are you noticing an, some level of increased sensation in your foot as you do that? And while this may seem rather trivial at first, this is extraordinarily important because this is the beginning of understanding how to easily, effortlessly go into higher states of consciousness or altered states of consciousness. We like to think of altered states of consciousness as like taking mushrooms or some you know, psychotropic or alcohol or marijuana. And, and that's true, but that's why those are access points for people to different states than they normally live in, which changes and reorganizes their awareness in some way that sometimes they like and sometimes they don't, right? So by de facto, we can learn how to do this. And why is this important? Because when we're doing healing work with the body, if we view the stress in our body from our conditioned mind, nothing changes. All it does is actually loops the conditioning over and over again. And you think you're going to get off the hamster wheel, but notice how it loops. Like notice how you keep dealing with the same type of stress over and over again. Notice how the same type of relationships keep showing up. Same struggles with money, same struggles with health. There come the S's. <laughs> so when we do healing work, what we want to do is we want to locate where this is in our body. And the first step is to unhook our awareness into an unlocalized awareness. And if you come to our event, this is why we call it the intuitive mind, because instead of living in the conditioned mind, we teach you how to live in, in your intuitive mind, which is a mind that can be unhooked from its local awareness. And then what happens is, you know, at least this, I'm giving, gonna paraphrase it for you in a way that I understand it. When you're watching from mind into body, it's like a subject looking at a subject. It's like the same subject is looking at itself, okay? When you come out into a, a altered state, higher state of awareness, unlocalized awareness, call it whatever you want, you create a subject object awareness. It's like now you are not, you're not in the movie, you are watching the movie, okay? And again, just tell me when you watch a movie, whether it's dramatic or scary or something else, there is a response that you're noticing in your body, but because it's not happening to you, you're enjoying it. It's like there's entertainment in it as well. And so when we meditate, when we start going into these higher states of consciousness, when we unlocalize our awareness, we learn how to watch our physiology. We learn how to watch our subtle energy body. These are all different levels of body. There's a mental body, energy body, um, uh, subtle body, causal body, right? Like there's all these different layers, essentially, we can look at. Humans are very, very dynamic. And when we look at it, what ends up happening is your body, like everything else that it does, it's highly intelligent, highly intuitive. You can call it like a smart body, essentially. Okay. And the same way, like I have cuts all over my fingers for moving, you know, these little nicks and cuts and my cuticles hurt and all that kind of stuff. But in a few days from now, I'm not going to feel those things. Why? Because my body will have repaired those things. It will have brought my hands back to what my body considers a neutral state. Okay. So when we are in stress, all we're saying is, currently, my body is not in a neutral state, okay? I'm having a parasympathetic response. I'm sorry, I'm having a sympathetic response. And what I want to have is a parasympathetic response. I want to ground my system. I want to teach my nervous system how to relax. And by doing what I just described, by unhooking from your awareness and by watching and just watching it, not doing anything, not trying to change it at all, not trying to negotiate with it, 
the same intelligence that is going to heal my hands and bring them back to a neutral state is the same intelligence that actually starts to go to work and actually brings whatever stress is happening in your life back to a neutral state. Okay. Now, is this going to cure this forever? Probably not. Okay. Probably not. Although there are unique experiences where people are just ready. The work has been done. The foundation has been set. The system can let go of that and people change and shift overnight. It actually happens pretty often. Okay. I don't want to say that it happens to everybody because that's not the case. Why? Because think about the way that you are right now. This has been conditioned and habituated into your identity, into your life through, like Elon said, tens of thousands of hours of doing the same thing over and over again. Okay. There's a, there's like, it, it's a knee jerk response. That stress is not something you're like, oh, this is something I really want to be stressed about. It just happens. Right. Again, has been habituated by thought, has been habituated by action, has been habituated by your emotional state. And so what we want to do is we want to break the cycle of the habituation by instead of trying to deal with it and fixing it and cajoling and meddling and doing all these things and judging. Right. And stressing about that we're judging. We just want to be with the natural state of the body. OK, and this is what and I'll say this last piece, and then I'll hand it over to Elon here. But like and this is what takes practice is not to try to get rid of the stress. OK, listen up, not how to try to get rid of the stress, but how to develop the viewer, the view that can watch the stress. Without getting involved in what's happening, just like you're watching a movie. OK, this has significant implications for your life. And I don't just mean about stress. I mean about how you act in your relationships. What's going to happen with you around money? Because the other thing you want to understand about the, the energetic response of your body, you we've all heard, you know, the secret and how to manifest things. Like if you want to understand how to change, because it's not a, this is what we always say. It's not a matter of you learning how to manifest. Okay. Like humans don't need to learn how to manifest. And there's so many courses that are like, I'm going to make you a great manifester. I'm like, Oh my God, I want to roll my fucking eyes. Why? Because there's no time in your life since the moment you were born that you weren't manifesting. It is innate. It is intuitive. And it's happening moment by moment, constantly. Everything in your surrounding is a reflection of what you're manifesting. Sometimes that's a tough thing for people to hear. Cause they're like, I don't want to manifest that. I don't want that relationship. It's like, yeah, well, if you keep getting in those kind of relationships, then there's a part of you that does. And that's an important aspect to realize it's not you. There's a part of you that's doing that out of its desire for survival. And it will not stop doing that until that part feels safe again. And it doesn't feel safe because some trauma happened a long time ago. So these practices enable us to moment by moment to bring safety to these parts. When these parts feel safe, they reconfigure. Like think about it like a molecule, right? You, if you've ever seen the periodic table of elements and you see how the molecules are organized, but every element, right? You add another, you, you get oxygen, you add some, um, I'm going to throw myself carbon over here, right? And you get like CO2 versus oxygen, right? You get carbon dioxide and it changes the property and the molecule will look a little bit different. There's an organization to it. There's a symmetry to it. There's a geometry to it. Our body is the same thing. There's this energetic configuration. And then everything manifests itself from that configuration. So if we want to shift that configuration, the first thing we got to do is actually look at our current configuration and go through its experience, right? So if there's stress, instead of like, you know, I'm sitting here in, in a stress response and I'm not trying to stop it, but what you guys can't see, but what you could tune into is that there's awareness that I've dropped down behind my back and I've placed it here on my back behind my heart. And even as I speak to you, there's an aspect of me that's localized, an aspect of me that's not. And I'm actually watching my physiology, like a movie from within. Again, I've been practicing this for quite some time. And so th that to me um, has become more intuitive to do. And as I do that, I can actually feel my nervous system down regulating and, my, and the energy starting to move down and grounding and that's helping me to slow down that's helping me to think more clearly that's helping me feel more connected to myself and you guys while i'm here also to my emotions to my intuition to where i want to go with this conversation like there's all these things because when i'm stressed it's like i even asked elon when we got on here i said can you start i'm <laughs> i'm in a stress response i need to ground myself 
you know, again, like asking for my needs. How many of you guys know that you're not good at asking for your needs? Say I in the chat box, right? And so again, while, while I'm, what I'm offering here is very simple and it is, and that's the beauty is like learning to do this is not difficult. It's innate. You already have everything that you need right now to do it immediately and be very good at it. Okay. Like, like the process, super silly, simple. Okay. What we really want to offer to you guys and those of you guys who come here and listen, we appreciate you listening, but Elon's kind of call to action is like, take action on it. Like if something feels good here, take action on it. Why? Okay. Yes. There's going to be a monetary exchange, but guess what? We're going to give you a lot of our time and 20 years of our wisdom. Okay. So there has to be some sort of what we call equal reciprocity, equal, equal exchange for you to show up and really listen. You come to one of our events for free, you're going to leave free too. You're, gonna, you're, you're not going to listen, right? You, people got to put something at stake to make themselves pay attention. Something that matters to them. And money, we've made it matter so that that matters to people, right? But the reality is that we know for you to transform your life, really transform your life. I mean, like have the beautiful house, have the most delicious relationships, you know, like travel the world, do the things that everybody for the most part feels like they want to do then your configuration needs to change. And the way that you reconfigure yourself is by understanding what are the daily practices? Like, what do I, how do I actually work with my system? How do I actually work with my body and my energy body? How do I not work against my psychology? And once you have these little practices, even five minutes a day of sitting quietly, because if you want to connect to this aspect of you, it happens in quiet. Yeah. It happens in stability. It happens in, you know, like really understanding, like how, how do I sit where it not just, okay, I'm going to meditate and I'm going to try to quiet my mind. My mind's not quiet. Like it doesn't work when you do that. It just does not work when you do that. Does not work. Very frustrating to, to be in that place. So that, that in essence is what we want to do here. We want to work with the divine intelligence of your body. We want to let your system guide your own transformation, guide your own healing, guide your own growth. Elon and I have the fundamentals for you, but the journey that your spirit wants to undertake in order to you know, elevate its spiritual energy to a higher plane, only your energy body could know that. Nobody could know that on planet Earth. I don't give a fuck if you go to Tony Robbins and you stand up in front of 10,000 people, tell him your story, and he coaches the shit out of you. He understands about psychology. Don't get me wrong. He's a absolute master but he doesn't understand the in intricate ways and the trillions of ways that your brain and your body has made connections to its environment but the own but your system does and it has a timing a purpose and a place in which it does these things and knows how to relieve that stress in itself as long as you learn how to step back and actually let your system do what it's designed to do and so our work is about that how do you in become intuitive about unlocalizing the mind, watching the body from within. And I could tell you, Elon and I have been doing this practice intensely now for close to six years. No, close to five, uh, a little over five years for me. And like watching how things transpire, like we've all hit, you know, a flow state in our life where things are amazing, like watching that sustain itself for longer, longer periods of time, or watching just, you know, insane windfalls of money or clients or just how my relationship with my wife has tremendously improved. You know, like Elon and I clearly were brothers. I don't know how, how many brothers <laughs> could work together as well as we have for as long as we have. But I can tell you like every three to four months, Elon knows this to be true. Like years ago, Elon and I would butt heads, get off the call and be like, fuck you, fuck you. You know, and like we, we're we're aware enough to know like okay that was stupid so we need to go take responsibility and generate communicate like communication that works again and but that was what we've done since we were kids like that was a very clear pattern in our lives and one that honestly we didn't see any end to we just kind of took as de facto like that's how it's going to be you know like every once in a while we're going to have a blowout great we've learned enough things that we'll come back together and take responsibility and, but like it leaves wounding in the system, right? Like, and then you got to work through that too. Or it shows up again next time. You're like, fuck, this is just like last time. All right, argue, argue, argue. And like that hasn't happened, I don't know, three years-ish, something like that. Like we, our relationship is so fluid, it shocks me. Like we get, like when we get into those moments where it's like really stressful and Elon's like, I get you. 
and he's like perfectly calm. I feel his connection there with me. It's not removed because that's what used to happen. I used to, I have this like anxious, needy system that's like, come, I need you. And Elon's like, I'm not getting the fuck out of here, right? Like we, we all have those dynamics in a relationship where one is like, I need you. And the other person's like, sorry, I got to go. We call that anxious avoidant relationships. And like that dynamic is completely gone from our relationship. Com- like completely gone from our relationship. And it's not because we sat around and had a conversation and said, hey, we're not going to do this anymore because that that doesn't work. That doesn't work. You can't convince the part that it's got to change the way that it's been trying to survive because that was my survival stuff and Elon's survival stuff, our little kid parts showing up. Difference is when you learn how to work your little kid parts, everything changes because that, that aspect of you can relax and calm down. And so that when that that is actually happening in your environment, that part doesn't have to come forward to be like, we need to survive this. The part doesn't need to come forward at all. It's safe now. It's settled. It's relaxed. And that's the beauty. Because it doesn't arrive, it doesn't manifest that challenge like it always does. And then something completely new and spontaneous and unexpected can occur because you're not adding stuff that draws those kind of, you know, responses from people in the universe and everything around you. And suddenly you're like, that was new. And you look up into your brain, you go, you don't want to do anything about this. And he goes, no, you got nothing. The body's feeling relaxed. It's, it, it is shocking, but here's the aspect of it. It's so subtle, so subtle. And for most people, they're not looking for subtle. They're looking for macro. I got to change everything. I got to, I'm poor. I got to be rich. I'm unhealthy. I got to get healthy immediately. Like and then they get sidetracked because they go, oh, it didn't happen. I didn't get a six pack in three days. I didn't make a million dollars in a week, you know? And it's like, you can't think this way. Like you want to start thinking about your life in long term. You know, it, it has been a change for me this year. Sorry bro, for talking so much, just in, in flow here. Um, you know, it's been a really big change for me this year. Like I'm starting to think not in, and I'm not saying like I'm planning everything, you know, like, oh, it's going to happen 10, 20 years from now. But I'm thinking the work I put in right now, you know, whatever your beliefs are around reincarnation, to me, anywhere, everywhere we look, energy is transmutable, never dies, you know, it's never created and it never dies. Like, so it's like, it's just my energy will transition to something else, whether it's spirit or, you know, whatever contemplations humanity has about that. I don't really know what's true, but I'm clear that with this energy, this awareness that I am will just move into some other awareness, to some other dimension, to some other experience. Like, that's just what it does. So if I'm doing that, then the work I'm investing right now is informing my spirit. My spirit chose this body, this experience, this time, you know, all this, being here with you guys talking, it chose all of this for something to happen. And so I'm thinking to myself, hey, well, when I come back and I'm embodied again, or I'm in a different form, what are the lessons that I want to carry forward to that? Do I want to carry all this trauma or do I want to let it go? And I think we're in a very unique time in human experience in the transition that we're, we're seeing both physically certainly spiritual circles and energetically. These are like highly uh, energy rich prophesized times and the cycles of how energy and, and history works for us. And if you get that, then right now is one of the biggest opportunities you have to upgrade yourself as a human being, to clear your energy and become mo- more coherent with your soul's purpose. I don't think it's coincidence that 50% of people are not going back to their job. People are looking for something new. They're looking for, for, for purpose. They're looking for their alignment. They're looking for what feels good for them. And these are big transitions that we got to navigate as, as a society and as a species over the next few decades. But like we are making that turn. And so for people who are uh, in this energy, in this conversation, doing this work, I could tell you that you are an early adopter of some new fucking energy that is profound and will change your life. And I promise you, that this, this century will be the century for energy and awareness in ways that have baffled humanity for a very long time. And you can, and this is not just spiritual science. You can go look at what's happening with quantum physics. Like there is this awareness that's arising that we have looked at everything and observed it in a completely wrong way. And it's time to turn and to look within. Uh, I spoke to someone today that is a three, uh, three stripe, uh, Kung Fu master, uh, has learned from, uh, top Rinpoche's, uh, sat with Qigong masters, like worked with the Dalai Lama, like, you know, that kind of person. 
and we were kind of going back and forth and, and I find it really interesting to meet these people because the longer you're on this path, the simpler your your vocabulary gets and the simpler mm -hmm. the process gets. Whereas there's so many books about people trying to sound really smart. You know, I'm going to share my mantra with you and we'll do an exercise here in, in just a minute. Um, my mantra dozens, if not a hundred times a day is find my feet. That's it. And I'm talking to this guy and he's telling me how, you know, the, the, process is very simple. It's like in the beginning, everyone wants to be out here and they want to figure out a tool to fix this or a tool to overcome that or a tool to change this. And he's like, and all they really need to do is just watch how they be to actually allow to arise all these ways that they've just been trying to manage. And you don't have to try to fix anything. Just watch them. And I was like, yep. And he goes, and step two is finding your, he said it this way, he's like finding your gravity. And I was like, hmm, interesting. And he's like, just you, you bring a weight, like you add mass to the way you hold your body in this dimension. And this is what we talk about grounding, right? Like, why do I say found my feet? Because as you find your feet, you bring more mass to the lower half of your body. And if energy flows, when we're in a stressful or anxious situation, where does your energy go? It's always going up here. It's always trying to figure out what needs to change. And it's very rarely, like for most humans, it's they need to change. It needs to change. The world needs to change. Then at some point you do enough personal development. You're like, okay, I'm the one that needs to change. Right. That's kind of like where most people that have done personal development, what we're talking about is like, you don't need to change at all. You just need to watch with awareness what's happening. And the way to do that is you bring ground in. And this is what he was talking about through gravity. And as we do that, new information happens because when this is not tasked with trying to figure out how to navigate circumstances and people all the time, more, or I should say new information is going to come into your system and actually release things. So when Natalie is like, it was, it was too stressed to meditate. It's like, no, that's exactly when you meditate. And instead of meditating as in this, like, I have to get to this peaceful, beautiful, blissed out state. No, your meditation is I'm going to watch anxiety. I'm going to watch stress. I'm going to watch overwhelm. That's meditation. It's not about how like to get to that quiet place. It's literally about watching what is there at this exact moment. But again, this is not to pick on Nat. Nat I, I know very well. She's actually in one of our programs right now. Um, and she was talking about like how all this stuff came up, you know, Natalie just started our level two program. It's like, this is what happens. All the stuff starts to rise to the surface because as you sit in this field, there's more safety and more well-being, which allows all this stuff to bubble to the surface. And then what she's pointing to is like, but I started drinking again. Why? Because that's the default. We each have our default mechanism to try to stop that feeling of stress, stop that feeling of anxiety. So for Natalie, it's drinking alcohol. For some of you, it might be too. It could be taking a hit of something. It could be taking medicine. It could be taking a pill. It could be going to sleep. It could be going, to, going for a run, going to work out, eating. Each one of us has our own vice that when the stress level hits the RPM, right? Like the red light limiter, you go to. Now, what happens is when you can shift into this place of, I can watch as all of this builds, but I'm not going for the ride with it. I'm not going into like, try to figure out and, and solve my life mode. I'm literally just watching like, wow, my heart is pounding. Wow. My throat is clenching. My stomach is really, really tight. And like, I'll just, ugh, right now. And I'm just watching it. In that watching, the release actually happens. 
that's the beauty. That's the simplicity. And that's what I was saying to this guy is like, I love how this stuff is so simple, but you're going to come to this conversation and your mind is going to go, there is no way that it's that simple. They got to be not telling me something. There's got to be something that they only tell people at their, you know, $50,000 program. Like, no, this is it. I'm telling you right now, this is it. Now, there's a big, big difference, like I said in the beginning, between this is an information where you're going to write it down and go, okay, he said, find my feet, uh, ground, right? But you have no access to what that feels like. Yeah. You have no access to experientially knowing what ground even means or what safety even means. To you, it's just some word that I threw out there. And so why do people work with us for years? It's because as you deepen into this practice, what you need is you need a template. You need something to show you the path. And as your body learns these things, it then can start to, on its own, get to these places. But in the beginning, that's why I said like in the group, it's so beautiful because in the group, you can kind of like just sit and nourish yourself in this field. That's why... You know, you may have seen my post, but like there are people that this will be their 13th or 14th or 15th event. I don't even know which one. Like what just why would someone keep coming back to an event if it's, we literally say the same things over and over at every single event? They never change. Why? Because it's not about the information. It's about sitting in the field and having that experience of releasing that next bit releasing that next bit, having more safety to witness as all this stuff is happening. Like Alex was talking about, she just moved, right? Moving is stressful. Like, I don't care who you are. And she's like, I was great. It wasn't stressful. And things always happen during a move and things never work out during the move the way, right? But it's like, you're fine. And what Guy was pointing to, and I just want to reiterate, it's like every next step that you're going to, is being created now. So like you're manifesting right here, right now, a future that you're going to walk into, okay? The energy behind your manifestation. So if you're in stress and anxiety, overwhelm, and you're creating from that place, guess what you're going to walk into into your future? More stress, more anxiety, more overwhelm. But if you shift that just up, I'm not talking like A to B. Uh, a to Z. If you literally went from A to B and instead of like 10, uh, level 10 anxiety, you're at level eight anxiety. That's already going to create a different future that you're going to walk into and go like, mm, that was easier than last time. That used to be a lot harder. And now that energy is creating the next future. And you can see how you, you're almost putting yourself on this beautiful slippery slope. So I want to just take, we're going to take three minutes, literally. I want you to see, like, feel how simple and, and easy this is. So just notice wherever you are. You can be standing, sitting, doesn't matter. Just be where you are. And just breathe. And at first, I'm going to invite you to bring your awareness here, just to where it usually lives, right? It's going to live and it's going to, like, and I'm going to name things because I don't have you guys interactive here, but just notice like you might feel a pressure, a slight pressure kind of in, the, in between your eyebrows or kind of behind your eyes or maybe even in your temples. There's like a feeling of like constriction, right? And so now I'm going to just invite you to notice that. And as we notice that, I'm just going to share my mantra with you. Find your feet. And just find your feet right here, right now. However that looks, however that feels, find your feet. And keep finding, you might notice that more sensations are happening bottom of your feet, 
your ankles, maybe your calves. And now just notice your relationship to time. Does time feel faster here or slower? Notice the space in your mind. Is it quieter or is it louder? Notice the tension in your body. Tighter or looser? Even notice your breath. Is it more natural? A little deeper? And just keep finding your feet. This is the simplest, most powerful practice that you can do. And you can do this dozens of times a day. You can do this while driving. You can do this while brushing your teeth. You can do this while sitting at your computer. You can do this while taking a walk. You can do this while exercising. It doesn't matter. Notice how different your physiology feels as we sit in this grounded state. Now extrapolate that to the place where you actually are able to live in this state. This is not some state that you practice to get into. Imagine you actually lived from this place. You tell me, how would this impact your relationships, your self-love to yourself, which would transpire into different health decisions and things like that? Would you take senseless, needless, quick, I just got to move action, or would you actually be able to sit and take decisive inspired action from here. And if everything is the energy behind the action, which energy would you like driving your life? Frantic, overwhelmed, stressed, or this? Grounded, stable, well-being. I cannot make it any simpler than that for you. Now, as far as having the practice and having the experience, that's where coming to the spiritual dojo happens. Everyone that wants to master or get good at anything, well, the smart ones, <laughs> work with other masters. You want to learn to be a world-class athlete? Guess what? You hire coaches that will help you be a world-class athlete. You want to be an amazing chef? You go to culinary school. You work with really, really amazing chefs. That's just how information, energy, transmission happens. That's it. If this calls to you and this is the kind of work that you want to do, sit with people who have it. Because I can promise you one thing. I know humans and humans will weasel themselves out of everything. You'll write this. You'll be like, I'm going to do this. You'll last for maybe three, four, five days. And then something will happen. Your mind will convince you that none of this shit works. And you'll be right back to where you started searching for the next thing. 
And if that's been your life path for a long, long time, I'm telling you, it does not have to be. Hmm. It really doesn't. If you dedicated this next year, these next few months to cultivating this level of stability and well-being in your system, your life will never be the same. And if you want to take a sip of that, a big, big gulp of that to actually kickstart the energy of what that looks like, you do not want to miss this event. And we say this all the time, like if you come to this event and it doesn't absolutely blow your fucking socks off, ask for your money back. You have never experienced anything quite like it. That's a promise. And for $297, it's honestly a joke. If you're, if you don't consider yourself to be worthy of that investment plus two days, half days of your time and energy. Actions speak louder than words. Hmm. Yeah. So that's it, guys. We'll wrap up again. If you know that you want to be at the event, you can go enroll yourself. Intuitivemind.live in your URL bar. Uh, if you have any questions, you're still something is lingering or you got to figure something out, that's totally fine. Just comment tickets in the comment box. Even if you're watching this on replay, you can still uh, comment that. We have people scouring the comment box looking for who's asking for support. And then uh, Nikki or Corey will reach out to you. Jasmine will probably be in communication with you at some point. Um, yeah, and get those questions answered. Jump in. And like Elon said, the event's coming up real, real fast here on Saturday. And right when you buy your ticket, you get uh, immediate access to six hours of training. And it's not a requirement, but it is a strong recommendation that you do that training before you will get a lot more value from the event itself because it, it sets the precedence and foundation. There's also an entire healing process that happens in there that's very powerful. So it like amplifies uh, your experience when we go into our own healing experience. So you definitely want to grab that ASAP so you can get um, that access and start going through that work. So it doesn't feel so um, like you're trying to squeeze it all in. All right, guys, we love you very much. If you're new to the community, welcome. Hope you enjoyed today. We'll be, we'll be back next week. And for those of you guys coming to the event this weekend, we'll uh, get to spend quite a bit of time together. Love you all. Bye-bye, everybody.